Dear America, we are still here. You do not know this, but we are still here. Now that is not an accusation, it is not a threat, nor is it a warning, but it is a fact that colonization happened and we are still here. This is your alarm in the dawn of the 21st century. So why do we need a wake-up call in the middle of the American dream? It's because our nation is divided. Where I'm from, Navajo philosophy teaches us, Honjon and Ke. Loosely translated, Honjon and Ke, they mean balance and family. Honjon is the beauty way. It's when things, all things in life are beautiful. It's what we want for ourselves, it's what we want for others. Ke is family, friendship, loved ones, community, our interactions with each other. Traditionally speaking, the two cannot exist without each other. They are intertwined. With the responsibility and privilege of family, one finds balance in life. Family from a pre-colonial lens extends itself to friends, neighbors, and community. Within Ke, we finish the we wish the many blessings of Honjon upon everyone, walking in beauty together. Literally in English, without balance, we fall. Such as with family, such as in life, without them we would fall. We need them and they need us. I'm here to speak about our world's perceptions through an indigenous lens and how decolonized thinking can bring us back together. When we think of a history, we, in America, we rarely refer to a collective history, a history that happened for you, a history that happened for me, a history that happened for others. Elders teach us that we all perceive time in very different ways. There is a historical time that comes before us, there is the future, the many generations that will follow us, and then there is the time that we spend here in, on this earth. However, all of which share an equal value. Yet, ironically, indigenous people have been erased from these timelines. Consider the internet, for example. When we look, search for the terms Native American, these are the images that come up. These are the images etched into our minds. We are stuck in the past, frozen in time, encased in amber to remind us of a time when colonists and Native Americans coexisted. We are the forgotten ethnicity in America. imprisoned within several pages of textbooks within our nation's schools. Excised from today and adhered only to the side of football helmets in the sake of honor. The majority that you see here is not authentic to the indigenous experience. America, despite colonization, we are still here. In fact, we are all still here. We are tethered to our past, and in order to shine light towards our next days, we must reconnect to that past. Why is all of this important? Three words, context for content. Much like the internet, words, we use them every day to connect to others. Our stories, our narratives, our words provide context. The context is everything. Context is the conduit that brings the content of our lives closer together so that what I say can change you and what you say can change me. At Arizona State University, I teach indigenous rhetoric which provides this context 
and complete history of indigenous people. It's a gathering of words that offsets 500 years of colonization. That's 20 generations. But also words that gather us all in that communal effort. Words that decolonize, words that heal, words that breathe life into this world. We hope to empower each other with our language. And how do we do that? With our stories, with our narratives, with our words. But again, sharing an equal value. Where one's mythology is another's genesis. An actual moment within the timeline. Having cognizance of this collective aspect of time is crucial in order to, to know our way in the world. Context is something that this nation has lost. For example, in our timeline, Native American elders are products of the boarding school era, meaning that these institutions became their parents. Most children suffered with a great deal of abuse within these schools. Students graduated with a high degree of displacement, resulting in poverty, substance abuse, and the inability to properly care for their own children. And then their children passed on the same traits to their children, ushering in what is known as transgenerational PTSD. Colonization brought about many of these things. Indigenous people being marginalized, remaining within the periphery, perpetuates them. How can we make everything better? Where do we start? To measure how our words affect those of tomorrow is a powerful thing. We change. No, we expand our narrative. Deconstruct our language, unearth a past, and replant seeds of stories with words of a more inclusive nature. It begins with awareness and its most active engagement of the word, awareness of who we speak to, an awareness of what we say. Imagine if we were to see through different lenses, each providing a context. U.S. conquest and a history of victory spanning for centuries, that's one timeline, that's one context. Imagine victimization through that colonization, indigenous people. What narrative would they say? What stories would they speak? However if, however, if these two different contexts, these two different timelines are merged, we see a larger world. From a rhetorician standpoint, that's what's called critical thinking. From an indigenous standpoint, that is the decolonized mind. Colonization happened. There's no doubt about it. It's a reason why we are here united as the strongest nation. Just as indigenous families suffer from intergenerational PTSD, our nation's families suffer from intergenerational amnesia of how this country was built. My call to you is for us to see the larger picture of things. Let us together revise the American dream with words that shine light beyond the periphery. Let us accept everyone within our communities. A change in our language is needed. A change in our ways is necessary. Our words that we breathe into this world can make lives matter. Let's encourage our daughters to be vocal and actually listen to what they say. Cultivate and foster their leadership. Let's listen to our sons when they speak their emotions, when they feel. A decolonized mind knows the 
cumulative and collective consciousness in that way where what we do today affects those of tomorrow. We are still here. We are all still here together. The world needs your words, the good ones. My dear America, good morning. Thank you.